So about 10 years ago, I was uh, walking through the woods on a hike with my older boys. We had followed an old trail and we followed it to this lake behind me here, which is Bellwood Lake, which is one of the early uh, water supplies for the city of Tyler. And uh, we stumbled upon an old abandoned picnic area, a park that was set aside on a road that had been closed off. And, uh, and then we kept walking down the trail even more and it and ended up being Bellwood Lake Road, the road that came to Bellwood Lake. And along it, we also stumbled upon an old closed down golf course and clubhouse uh, that was all overgrown. And I, I, after going back home, after hiking out that day, I told my wife, I said, you know, I would love to do a TV show one day about places like this because we see them all the time these abandoned places that are just forgotten that have stories like that i'd just love to do a tv show about that at some point and she looked at the camera that i had sitting nearby a little editing station i had set up and then she looked back at me and said just do it so i did and that's what we've been doing now for 10 years on expedition texas is traveling across the state looking for these lost legends out there and telling their stories uh, never really did the story on Bellwood Lake. Um, it's pretty well known and not terribly off the beaten path, but uh, this is really kind of the place that sparked the initial idea for Expedition Texas. And it's cool to be back here 10 years later uh, at kind of where the thought hit my mind. It's like, hey, what about a TV show about lost history and abandoned buildings and ghost towns and these old picnic areas and, and places that are hidden in the woods that we don't we don't know they're there unless we get off the road sometimes and take a look around. So that's what we've been doing for 10 years. And this season we thought we'd go back and revisit some of the places that have uh, had the biggest impact from season one uh, and then also tell some new stories. And so that's what we're gonna do. So hop in, let's go for a ride and go find another lost legend out there somewhere. It's out there, we're gonna find it. Texas is full of lost history. From lost cemeteries to abandoned buildings. From the infamous to the obscure. Hitch a ride and travel across the Lone Star State, looking for hints of Texas' colorful past. Our lost history. This is Expedition Texas, and we're gonna find it. One of our very first adventures on Expedition Texas took us to a small community outside of Canton, Texas called Stone Point. We stayed close to home that first season because we originally only intended to air in East Texas. Shooting around Canton was also significant for me because I had grown up near there and graduated from the same high school as our guide, Sam Smith. So as we headed back to see Stone Point 10 years later, we veered off of Highway 64 to a community on the opposite edge of town, where I grew up, Colfax, Texas. Located between Canton and Van, Texas is nothing more than a small collection of homes, a cemetery, and an old building whose original purpose is unknown, but it's now someone's home. And my old home? The place I grew up is just down that old country road. Back on Highway 64, as we make our way through Canton, we think back on the first time we came to Stone Point. It was there we got our opening shot of a box turtle I nicknamed Rocky, because when we saw him, he had apparently healed from a major accident at some point because his shell had been broken and he was missing a hind leg. We stopped and got a shot of Rocky crossing the street, and it made it into the opening of Expedition Texas for several seasons. Then at Stone Point, Sam Smith showed us an old blacksmith shop that was surprisingly intact after decades of being abandoned. It's probably just a workbench, but it's made of a tree stump and a wooden block over here with a piece of steel on top of it. If you look down here on the ground, there's actual pieces of coal that, right. that he actually used. There's no telling how old these little pieces of coal are. Today, we're headed back to see what's left of the old blacksmith shop and to explore something Sam said he didn't get to show us the first time we were there. There's some wildlife over there that's going to be interesting. Deer, coyotes, old buzzards maybe? Maybe a monkey or two. We're 
in Van Zandt County, just west of Canton, in the small community of Stone Point. Here we've met up with our original guide, Sam Smith, 10 years after our initial visit to check in on the old blacksmith shop we saw there the first time we came. Sam says it's in this clump of trees over here, uh, and so we're, we're going in that. All right, let's go. We went around and found the door. Uh, Sam pulled the door open, and just as he did, I saw something run off. Okay. A chicken? What was that, buddy? A chicken? Where do you see a chicken? Some kind of bird just went back that way in the corner. There's a big bird feather and a lot of bird poop. And we're not alone. There's a buzzard over here in the corner. She's probably got some eggs, and she's gonna get mad at us. He probably had his had his plate full working on all kinds of stuff from the cotton gin and all kinds of farm equipment all around here because that's really all they did here. Sam, how you been, man? Good, how are you, Bob? Oh, Welcome doing back. Right. Man, it's been a long time since we've been out here in this field. Ten years ago, yep. we came out here and you showed us, uh, talk, kind of told us the story of Stone Point and showed us the old blacksmith shop and I can't help but notice we couldn't see it before when we were out here, but now, back here behind us, you can kind of see it peeking out. Yep. That's the roof of it right there over those trees. So uh, it's been a while since we've seen this place and there has been some damage now, I understand, right? Yeah, there's been quite a bit of damage. We had a tree that was against the building that kind of fell out this way and it brought the wall with it, but the structure's still there and we can still see everything there. I know when we were out here before we found some pretty cool things, uh, but there's something new this time that I want to point out is your daughter is here. My daughter is here. <laughs> Hi, what's she your name? Sarah. Hi, Sarah. I'm Bob. <laughs> nice to meet you. That's how they shake hands too. You want to get the, the real handshake? <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Uh, so we're going to go in here and sir, are you going to go first? No? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> we So uh, last time we were here, some cool old memories because it was our first season to do an expedition in Texas and our first time to really get into a place and find things. So whenever we went in last time, we kind of found some of the tools of the trade, right? Mm -hmm. There was, a, there was a sharpening stone in there and his old workbench, and uh, I think there was an auger yeah. for drilling holes. And some uh, some wildlife as well, right? There, uh, there was a nest in there. I think it had some baby buzzards in it. You're right. Yeah, and uh, so Sam has been out here kind of scouting a little bit, and we might actually find something in there this time, too. It was out in there whenever you came last time, right? They never grew up. They, <laughs> they never grew I up. I like still 10 years. That... There's, there's still some chicks in the nest. Okay. That I guess it's just a family. It's just a favorite is. nesting place, yeah. and it's where they always come back to, uh, and hopefully it's uh, kind of still there. So let's head back and check out the blessing. Let's check shop. it out. I think the best way in is this way, Bob. There's a little trail here that something has made. Well, it's a nice shelter. Yep. It would make sense. Yeah, not as much left of it as when we were out here before, Sam. No, not much. You can see where the tree brought the ground up with it when it came up. and It did, and took some of these tools with it. There's some kind of a wheel over there. Yeah, that old, the old grinding wheel is still here, but yeah, it suffered some damage for sure. And, uh, and oh look, some of the residents are still here too. who else is still here? Looky there. Well, they got them a good place to stay, and these are quite a bit older than the ones we saw out here before. Yeah, they are. So a lot of the stuff is still here, and some of it's kind of out of place. But one thing that uh, you pointed out when we were still here were the little uh, coals yeah. that he used. And I still see, even though everything's a little disheveled now, that it's still there's still some of it down here. Yep. Sure enough. And uh, still a few pieces of uh, the coal that he used. And he, of course, fanned that coal, and that's how he generated the heat. And I see over there some of the pieces that were in here before. It's been a long time, and a lot of the stuff is still here, sort of still around, but uh, in, in different places. And like a lot of places that we see, uh, Mother Nature's kind of taken back over here. And uh, that's kind of what happens when you have an old building like this out in the middle of the pasture. That's right. If you remember when y'all were out here before, Bob, there was, um, I showed you where a cotton gin was. Yeah. And they had, they had a water wheel out here that was run off of this pond. And uh, it's still all here. It's mostly concrete. So there's really nowhere for it to go.
Ten years ago, we first explored Stone Point, a small community with a rich history just west of Canton, Texas. Our guide then, and again now, is Sam Smith. There's a buzzard over here in the corner. She's probably got some eggs and she's going to get mad at us. If you remember when y'all were out here before, Bob, there was, um, I showed you where a cotton gin was. Yeah. And they had, they had a water wheel out here that was run off of this pond. Man, it is still back here, Sam. Yep, everything's still intact. Of course, it's uh, as strong and sturdy as it was. I can't imagine it ever going anywhere. No, this is just concrete. Yeah, and so it's at one point or another, somewhere in here, there was a big uh, water wheel. Uh, which was bolted to this concrete structure and I guess fed off of this water here in the pond, right? Yeah, that's what I'm to understand um, Where these you see these threaded bolts sticking up out of the yeah Concrete was probably where it was mounted Where did they uh, so what were they ginning? I was it cotton cotton cotton. Okay. Yep, and I guess uh, grown in the fields around Yep stone point and uh, looks like you know it's as time goes by and things get uncovered, we find new things out here when we come back 10 years later. Yeah, look at this. Obviously a part of a very heavy steel that would have held things down, probably right along the axle there. Probably did have held the axle yeah. down that the, that the water wheel would have been turning yeah. on. Wow, and that is some serious heavy steel out here. That's awesome. Yep. Well, the things you find back in the woods, man, and like this stuff, I guess, predates, this is pre-1800s pre anyway, Probably right? Probably pre-1900s. Yeah, yep. It, and, uh, uh, there was a fire that took the whole cotton gin out, and I don't remember the year of the fire. We've revisited the old blacksmith shop and the mill pond. Now, though, Sam tells us we can get a close look at a key feature of the small community. A small house turned community center seems to be no longer off limits, so we're headed over to explore. And, uh, you know, if I remember correctly, there was a house nearby here somewhere where there was like a stone point gate that we walked under, right? Yep, there sure and, is. Uh, can you show us the way to that? We sure can. All right, man. Right over here. Cool, following you. Right through the woods. Well, it's been a while since we've been here and there's not much left of the, uh, the sign over the gate here, but we can tell, still tell it's Stone Point. Yep, you can still see the design for the letters that are missing. You can yeah. tell where the paint has chipped off. Yep, and I bet if you look. Still, there's one right there. You can find uh, at least part of some of the letters down here. Yep. Here you go, sir. That'd be a part of a letter. It's hot. <laughs> it's a hot letter. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll catch that later then, right? So yep. here it is. This is the old Stone Point Community Center, right? This is it. You know, last time we were out here, we weren't able to get in, but it looks like that door's open. I think so. It's just got a little wire holding it shut. Well, let's uh, let's see what we can get into. Let's check it out. The old Stone Point Community Center here. You sure you want to do this, sir? You ready? <laughs> wow. How cool is this? And look at this piano. Wow. Oh, wow, yeah. This thing has been here for a while. The keys <laughs> barely even that? move, man. How about that, Sarah? Yeah. It, is. it might take more than a tuner to get that thing working again. I think again. so. Needs some, needs some restoration. Sure. So, uh, uh, kitchen over here. And a lot of gathering places. Uh, what a cool place. This looks like, I mean, it could have been lived in as a home, too. I think so. I think it was at some point. Well, I love it, Sam. We've already gotten to see more than when we were out here last time. That's right. I've got something else I want to show you, too, that you didn't even know about last time you were here. Oh, really? And uh, what is that? There's a house that is, as the crow flies, it's about a mile from here. Okay. But we're going to relocate and uh, walk out to it. It's an old log cabin Yeah. that's uh, probably early 1900s. We're going to go check it out. Okay, and why are we checking out this log cabin? What, what does it there's have to just, do with Stone Point here? There's, um, it's close enough in proximity that it may have been the same people yeah. that started Stone Point, but there's, um, there's some wildlife over there that's going to be interesting. Deer, coyotes, old buzzards maybe? Maybe a monkey or two. A monkey or two? A monkey or two. Well, I'd be a first for Expedition yeah. Texas. Let's go, I'm Let's ready. Let's go. We 
we've returned to Stone Point and revisited some locations featured in our first season of Expedition Texas. But now, Sam Smith tells us about a newer discovery deep in some nearby woods and the possible inhabitants there. There's some wildlife over there that's going to be interesting. Deer, coyotes, old buzzards maybe? Maybe a monkey or two. A monkey or two? A monkey or two. Well, that'd be a first for Expedition Texas. Let's go. I'm Let's ready. Let's go. All right, the easiest way in is right here through this hole in the fence. And there's cows okay. over here, too. They've never okay. gotten out, but we can get in. Okay, well, let's go. Let's go for Sir, it. Sir, are you going? You coming with us? Yep, she's going for it. Step over it. That's a country girl right there. It yeah, should go, be go a country there. girl. Come on, there you, go. you got it. There you go, all right. So this road that we're walking on here, I mean, you'd call it a driveway, but years ago it actually was a road. You can see on the edge of the roads where the ditches are kind of cut out. Not so much there, but back there you could. Yeah. And if you go around this corner, you can see it a lot better. You'll actually see that there were actual ditches on both sides of this road. Was this a, a paved road at one time? I don't think it was, it was ever a, uh... paved. It'd be a dirt road. Okay. Well, here you go, another hole in the fence and, and the, the road opens up a little bit. Yep. Yeah, this is a good way to get your steps in for the day. About how far back in here are we going? It's a little over half a mile, maybe less than a mile. All right, right here, it looks like this is an old barn. It's really just a pile of metal now, but the way it's laid out, maybe this was a corral. There's a gate back over here on this side. Yeah, look, uh, so right here, there's definitely something was corralled in here. Yeah, for sure. The maybe way hogs or something based on the way you got the metal around the bottom. Yeah, probably. Possibly. You know, every time I try to guess about something like that, I get corrected on YouTube. They, mis they, yeah, they catch I'm, my mistakes. I'm sure they do. Often, so I'm looking forward to those comments now. Yeah. Yeah. And one key feature of Stone Point we always see when we're out here, and I noticed this a lot last time, is a lot of these big natural stones coming up out of the ground. Yep, they really are. It's hard to dig a hole around here. Because you a, might just pull up a big old chunk like that, right? Yeah, you'll be digging a hole and just hit a rock and you've got to move. How far are we from the house now? It's right behind these cedar trees behind us. Really? So right, right in, in this here? this little grove of trees. All right, this is the back side of this house that we're coming up on now. There's, um, this was a well years ago. When I was a kid, I can remember that it actually still had the brick circle around it. I Let's, see like an old air compressor out here and some old screen doors and a few other uh, cool things. And yeah, look at the logs on this thing, man. Yeah, they're really, really cool. The way they're cut and put together. Um, they probably have already heard us if they're in here, but there's a real possibility that there could be monkeys living in this There's house. a possibility there could okay. be monkeys in here. I'm gonna look. Um, oh, well, we, uh, if they are, they're not home right now. I wonder how, when's the last time somebody lived in here? Any ideas? There's no telling. I have no idea. Wow. When I was a kid, I would just walk out here, ride my bike out here, whatever. But look at this place. How cool is that? We had some neighbors that oh. uh, were exotic animal collectors, and okay. they had a few monkeys that lived on a little island. And when the island dried up, the monkeys moved out. <laughs> and some of our neighbors have seen them coming and going out here. So. And there's evidence of these monkeys. There is evidence. Okay. There so are pictures. We have pictures. And there of, are there are wow. stories. Stories and evidence from and... people people who have not gotten together. Their stories match. So. Really? There's plenty of evidence. Well, I was watching the trees on my way out here and uh, and thinking I was excited to see where where the monkeys live. And hey, if I, if I were a monkey, that's that's not a bad place, though, right? Yeah, if I were a monkey, I'd live here for sure. <laughs> if there's anything we've learned on Expedition Texas, it's that sometimes that clump of trees in the middle of the field is hiding something unique. Or that old pond may have been more than just a watering hole for the cows. Or perhaps if it looks like there was a road there at one time, it might be worth a hike to follow it and see what's at the end of it. Just be sure to keep your eyes out for the monkeys. Down the road, there's always another lost legend waiting to be explored. And on Expedition Texas, we're going to find it.